Indian financial year starts from 1st April and ends on 31st March. Many people do not plan their tax saving for the entire year and finally in March when the financial year is about to close, they start looking for options to save tax. While it is important to invest money, it is equally important to save money. And one option to save money is by reducing the income tax liabilities. Do you know that if your income is about 10 lakh, then you can save up to Rs 46,800 with just one tax saving option. Likewise, anyone with income of more than 5 lakh would have to pay tax. So it is important to understand various options of tax saving. One of the most popular options to save tax is under Section 80C where you can reduce your taxable income up to 1.5 lakh. There are a few more options to save tax. But in this video, we will only consider the tax saving under Section 80C. First of all, this is not the right approach to plan tax saving in the last month of the financial year. You should always start your tax planning well in advance right from the first month of the new financial year. This video is for those who are still looking for tax saving and also for those who want to save tax for the next financial year. Hello friends, my name is Sahil and this is my personal finance academy where I explain everything about money management in layman's language. I have divided this video in three parts. In the first part, we will discuss the five best option to save tax under section ADC. In the second part, we will understand the ELSS mutual fund category for tax saving. And finally, in the third part, I will mention the top three ELSS mutual fund for tax saving. All right, let's get started. So first option is tax saving FD. These are special FDs which fall in the tax saving category where you get a fixed annual interest without any volatility in your return. However, the returns are very low in the range of 5 to 6% depending upon the bank. Moreover, there is a lock-in period of 5 years which means you can't take out money till 5 years from the date of deposit. Interest earned is taxable. It means if you invest in tax saving FD at 6% annual interest and if you fall under 30% tax bracket, then your effective return post tax would be just 4.2%. Second option is PPF that is Public Provident Fund and EPF that is Employee Provident Fund. PPF provide an interest rate of 7.1% as of March 21. Its benefit is that your interest earned on the investment is also exempted. For example, if you invested 1 lakh and earned Rs 7,100 with 7.1% interest, you don't need to pay any tax on your entire income of Rs 7,100. Not only this, your entire amount on withdrawal is tax free. So let's say you invested in PF and built a corpus of 50 lakh, then your entire corpus is tax free, but it has a lock-in period of 15 years which means you can't take out money till 15 years, although partial withdrawal is allowed after 7 years. EPF is Employee Provident Fund and only available for employees. Currently, it has an interest rate of 8.5% per annum and interest earned is tax-free after 5 years of service. Third option is Repayment of Home Loan. Principal from Home Loan can be used for deduction up to 1.5 lakh under ATC. So if you have a home loan, you can use this option to save income tax up to 1.5 lakh. Fourth option is NPS that is National Pension Scheme. This is an initiative from Indian government to provide a pension for the unorganized sector and working professional to provide pension after retirement. It is a mix of debt and equity. The returns would vary in the range of 8 to 12 percent based on various categories within NPS. Although there is a lock-in period till retirement at the age of 60. Post-retirement, you can withdraw up to 60% of the money and the rest 40% would be given every month as pension. There is no tax on interest as well as no tax on 60% withdrawal amount on retirement. The best part with NPS is the additional reduction in tax liability up to Rs 50,000 under Section 80CCD over and above 1.5 lakh under Section 80C. Now the fifth option is ELSS that is equity link saving scheme. ELSS is a category in mutual fund that provides the dual benefit of investment as well as tax saving under section 80C. This category invests mainly in the large cap stocks. There is a lock-in period of 3 years which is the lowest among all tax saving options. 
The best part of ELSS is that returns are higher than fixed saving option like FD and PPF as the investment is in equity market, although the returns are not fixed. However, in the long term, ELSS return would be much better than fixed saving instrument. And there is only 10% tax on return from ELSS on capital gain above 1 lakh. For example, if you invested rupees 10 lakh and earned a profit of 5 lakh, then you need to pay 10% tax on profit above 1 lakh. So in this case, the total profit is 5 lakh, so 10% tax is on additional 4 lakh, and that would be rupees 40,000. So number one ELSS mutual fund is Media Asset Tax Saver. It has a fund size of rupees 6,350 crore and expense ratio of 0.29%, which is much lower than the average expense ratio of 1.18% in this category. Please note that we are talking about direct plan and growth option for all three mutual funds. If you look at the one year return, Media Asset Tax Saver has given 88% return, whereas its benchmark S&P BSC 500 TRI has given a return of 84%. Clearly, Media Asset Tax Saver Fund has easily beaten the benchmark. Please note that the high return is due to the fall in market during COVID in March 20 and then it recovered later. Three year average return is 17% as compared to benchmark average return of 13%. Five year average return is 21.4% as compared to benchmark average return of 15.9%. So Media Asset Tax Saver Fund has consistently beaten the benchmark over the last five years. Its top holding include HDFC Bank, Infosys, ICICI Bank and Axis Bank. It has 69.7% allocation in large cap, 21.6% in mid cap and 8.3% in small cap. If you look at the top allocation by sector, 38.5% is in financial sector, 11.36% in technology. 9.2% in energy and 7.16% in healthcare sector. Number two ELSS fund is Excess Long Term Equity Fund. It has a fund size of Rs 27,216 crore and expense ratio of 0.72 which is much lower than average expense ratio of 1.18% in this category. If you look at the one year return, Excess Long Term Equity Fund has given 62% return whereas its benchmark S&P BSC 500 TRI has given a return of 84%. So in one year, this fund is not able to beat the benchmark. But the three year average return is 16.5% as compared to benchmark average return of 13%. Five year average return is 17.6% as compared to benchmark average return of 15.9%. Its top holding include Bajaj Finance, Avenue Supermart and InfoEdge. It has 83.87% allocation in large cap 13.82% in mid cap and 1.7% in small cap. If you look at the top allocation by sector, 36.1% is in financial sector, 15.3% in services, 10.9% in technology and 9.8% in auto sector. Number 3 LSS mutual fund is Canada Robico Equity Tax Saver. It has a fund size of 1724 crore and expense ratio of 1.06% which is similar to average expense ratio of 1.18% in this category. If you look at the one year return, Canada Robco equity tax saver has given 81.9% return, whereas its benchmark S&P BSC 500 TRI has given a return of 84%. So in one year, this fund is not able to beat the benchmark. Three year average return is 19.5% as compared to benchmark average return of 13%. 5 year average return is 18.7% as compared to benchmark average return of 15.9%. Its top holding include ICIC Bank, Infosys, SBI and SDFC Bank. It has 69.3% allocation in large cap, 27.3% in mid cap and 1.5% in small cap. If you look at the top allocation by sector, 36.95% is in financial sector, 16.3% in technology 8.2% in auto and 7.8% in construction sector. So this is my list of top three LSS fund. Please note that there are two options of income tax slab. The above discussion on tax saving is applicable only if you opt for the old tax slab. If you opt for new income tax slab, it has lower tax rate, but you can't reduce your taxable income with investment. So you need to take a call if you want to go with an old tax slab or you want to go with new tech slab. In majority of the cases, people will end up saving more 
with old tech slab as compared to new tech slab. Those who are planning to invest for next financial year should better make a SIP in ELSS fund where a specific amount of money would be deducted every month. And it is difficult for me to explain every concept in 10 minutes. So if you want to learn everything, including tax planning, tax saving, mutual funds, stocks, insurance, etc., then you can explore my course on money management. Details are there in the description box. So which option do you prefer to save tax? Let me know in the comments. Also tell me which is your preferred ELSS mutual fund. I will see you with another video. Till then, take care.